Everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Eight wins in a row that we've been crunching. I don't know, I thought we were at like six as I blacked out for party yesterday. Robo Baby 2.0, Black Hole. To be honest, 2SSX QL1G. Well, to be honest, we're gonna drop Slow Worm right away. Um, Black Hole is really good, and you, this might surprise you coming from me. Robo Baby 2.0 is not that bad for a very early game piercing damage individual. Uh, obviously, I have some problems with this run, but the problems are are very surmountable. These don't break uh, spirit or uh, blue fires, huh? Those will. Oh, come on. <laughs> anyway, I think in some ways that was still worth it. The, the main problem with this run is uh, Rate of Fire. But our damage, it doesn't make up for it, but it compensates for it to a degree that has me unconcerned presently. So, feeling relatively strong as far as that goes for the time being. Uh... So I'm fortunate to get another spacebar item. We pretty much have to roll a uh, black hole here. It's a much better... I mean, like deck of cards, you don't mind if you need utility. We don't really need utility. I'm more concerned about, like, boss fights. So if we could just... That's a secret room right there, by the way. Um, you just... You know, you get the sense. It's just instinct at this point. And it, like instinct, it's wrong two-thirds of the time. But the times that it's right happen enough that I feel like I'm right all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel that about instinct. Sometimes people, you know, they hold preconceived notions, biases, etc., etc. Nobody's purely unbiased, of course. Some biases, I, I, I think if you really stretched, you could find situations in which biases were positive things as well. You know, like our bias towards, uh, you know, our family members instead of other people probably lends us uh, or leads to situations where we would treat them better than we would treat, you know, an, a stranger that we had a more unbiased opinion of. Helps secure that uh, closeness. I don't know, it's kind of a weird example. Feels weird, champ, in chat, please. Um... I'm just spitballing. I'm getting lost in the pseudo-intellectual sauce here. Take me down to the next floor. Um, but I feel like... If you have, like, an opinion about something, you see a news article that reinforces that opinion, you're like, see? I told you. If you see a news article that disagrees with that opinion, doesn't even enter your memory. You know? You see it, and then you're like, oh! The Dow's up 20 points. You know, it just doesn't even factor in. I don't even know what the Dow is, to be honest. I know, I think it's an index of American stocks. Is that correct? I know the NASDAQ. Those are like predominantly... Aren't those tech stocks? It's the North American stock... The Dairy Queen, maybe. Yes, of course, Dairy Queen. D-A-Q. <laughs> Hot eats, cool treats. We were talking about Dairy Queen. Kate and I did like a fast food tier list on on her Twitch channel. This is like close to a month ago. Maybe maybe even more than a month ago now. I was not surprised necessarily to see, but there was a, an alarming unification of opinion regarding Dairy Queen. I thought it might just be a Canadian thing. You know, Canadian fast food chains, they're a little weird in the sense that, like, you know, up here, nobody really likes Burger King. They exist in locations and uh, have conditions that are a little bit scary sometimes. Or they're, like, inside of an airport or a movie theater. And then, on the flip side of that, our a and w is extremely good. Like, A&W is beloved in Canada. It might have the most positive association of any Canadian fast food chain. Full stop. We're definitely going deep on this. This was very good. Um, so I, I never know how, like, people around the rest of the world feel about some fast food restaurants. But everybody seemed to be on the level with our Dairy Queen assessment. <laughs> Which is, like, 
I actually think, you know, the ice cream and the, and the quote-unquote cool treats, I think they're pretty tasty. I've had many, many blizzards in my day. I, we used to drive half an hour to get a blizzard. I don't know why I... It's not even like a back in my day, it's more of like a back in my hometown. If you wanted sushi, you had to drive to Toronto. That's not true. You probably could have gone to Ottawa. Um, grab that, please. Back then, now you could obviously you could just go to SEMA, but uh, it's one for all the for the three Kingston viewers watching right now. <laughs> uh, I think we'll leave without going to the shop, to be honest. And I I gotta say. I don't know if I've ever consumed hot food at Dairy Queen, except for the chicken strip basket. And the chicken strip basket is the best uh, meal you should never eat. I'm pretty sure they bread and fry the chicken strips like six separate times. They're delicious. The gravy, fantastic. The fries, eh, it could be worse. But every, like Dairy Queen is in disarray here. Like, there, I've, in Vancouver, I have seen a few. They're pretty rare. And I'm always like, I mean, I could go for some ice cream, but I don't think I want to die tonight. Anytime I walk past the Dairy Queen, there's just a certain... There's like an air of malevolence in, in the vicinity now. It's like, it's the only chain restaurant that feels like a money laundering operation might also be happening. So we verped a verp. Then we can verp a gulp. If only we could gulp a verp, then we'd really be in business. <laughs> okay, that's fine. This run's really coming together. It's it's not totally there yet. I'd still say we're probably dealing with slightly below average damage, but everything else we got, eh, I don't know, maybe it's close to average at this point, but everything else is working out real nice. Um, Lee. I can't remember. Did I tell the story of how I went to McDonald's to get my wife uh, dinner? And then there was a free McChicken in the bag, and I, I ran like... Well, I didn't run, but I walked quickly <laughs> like I had, I had stolen something. I've been thinking about it because I'm... It, it's thrown me into an ethical quandary. It's like, on the one hand, I did take something I didn't pay for. By the way, I'm not like... I'm not going to turn myself in. You'll never take me alive, coppers. Um... I did take something that I didn't pay for. However, I didn't really just grab it. I went to grab uh, my food, and then the person giving out the order said, don't forget your other bag. So I said, all right, I mean, you put it together. I'm sure you know what's what. There's your first mistake, assuming anybody knows anything. And moreover, I was like, here's the thing. If I was the dude waiting for a McChicken, and then a guy walked out with my McChicken, walked back in a minute later, and was like, Oh, actually, I don't think this is mine. I don't think I would eat it. I think I, honestly, it takes a lot for me to speak up in a situation like this. It's kind of outside of my personality for the most part. But I think that I would be like, you know what? I'd really like you to remake this because, you know, I don't know. This guy just came in with it. You never know what he did with it. I'm not saying something is... Uh, I don't think it's likely that he, like, tampered with the food or, like, you know, ate two-thirds of it or spit in it or whatever. But, like, you know, I really feel like the chain of custody was out of my sight. And, you know, as a result, I would like to have a fresh one. Plus, I also think that if you were, like, the staff at the McDonald's, if someone came in and was like, I think this isn't mine, you probably would just remake it anyway, right? It's standard protocol, I'm assuming. I don't know, man. I'm just spitballing here, but... Anyway, I think I, I did the, the reasonable action. And that's not just a way of absolving myself. <laughs> Come on, you're not going to let me get car battery. We can still do something on this shop. I bet one of these is going to work with us. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Anyway, how's it going? It's going well. It's, it's the rare late Friday Isaac episode. To be honest, it's a nice position to be in. Earlier this week, I was... I'm never really behind schedule, to be honest. I'm going to try this. Let's go. 
I don't get behind schedule very often in the sense like I mean we've been running Northern Lion tries since uh, the third week of November I've missed zero days come on dude <laughs> a couple of episodes have been like up to an hour and a half late but that's not even because of uh, you know like not having anything recorded It's honestly just like oh I set them for the wrong time so I, I very, very rarely am like, oh, I'm actually like not going to be able to deliver that deliverable today. Um, but I, I've been on like a one to two day backlog for a lot of series. And I was able to slightly, just slightly push that out before the weekend, before my normal workday was done. So I was like, you know what? That's Isaac time. That The Isaac arbitrage. Now, I'll tell you, for Frostpunk... I think it's probably a good thing that we only have... I mean, right now we have a three-day backlog, but that's just because tomorrow's my day off. So we will have a, uh, a two-day backlog by the time I start recording again. I think that's good, because that's a game where you want to make sure you're... Uh, you know, implementing mission-critical tips as quickly as possible. But for everything else, I like to be further ahead. And Northern Lion Tries is even like its own beast. Because I like to be even further ahead for that. Because you have to scout those games out. Nice library. Empress is fine. World is usable right now. Justice is usable right now. Justice is usable right now. Like, the, the worst feeling is when you need to do a Northern Lion Tries. You don't see anything coming out. You finally find something. You don't have time to email in advance to, like, get a code. You do the video, you put it up, and then you're like, okay, now tomorrow I need to repeat the process again. But when it, the best feeling is being ahead by a couple days because there's so much good stuff coming out, which is kind of the situation I found myself in today. It's very positive. Apart from that, not, not very much at all going on, to be honest with you. I continue to have a very mercurial relationship with my new gym. On Wednesday, it was it was so packed you could barely, you know, walk. Uh, today, which is Friday, nobody, nobody at all. One day, I'll uh, I'll understand. I'll understand the reasoning. It's not even like every Wednesday it's packed, and every. Uh, Friday, it's dead. It varies, like, it's almost like there's, they're sending out alerts to people's phones that are like, Hey, uh, don't go today. It's not worth it. I don't know, that's like, if I got that message, I'd be very alarmed. I would probably talk to the police. <laughs> I would be like, something's going down at that gym today, be careful. I don't know, I guess it's just, uh, it's variance, you know? But it feels weird. It feels like there's so many people there. There's enough of a sample size that the variance should be somewhat controlled. But then again, anytime I say something like that, really the only reason I'm saying it is to make myself seem smart. Um, and I mean, I, I have taken one more statistics class than probably, you know, the average North American. Um, yeah, there's a joke in there. I've taken, well, I've taken one statistics class and then, you know, a few classes that, you know, obviously built off of the statistics class, but... I feel like I think critically about, you know, like, sample size and probability and standard deviations and stuff like that. But at the same time, mostly I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> I just say it to, uh, to sound smarter than I am. Which is okay. Fake it till you make it, right? If I pretend to sound, or I, if I sound smart by pretending, who knows? Maybe in multiple decades, I could actually be smart by pretending. Um, Leviathan's very nice. I mean, no, I would say we we pretty much got this locked up at this point. I don't know if Book of the Dead benefits at all from... Uh, from uh, car battery, but we took it regardless just because... I think it's a little bit more interesting than Black Hole. Wow, you're really me some items on this one this one's shaping up quite nicely but yeah that's pretty much my day so far Fridays I mean every day is a little routine it's weird because I've you know I've been 
presenting this image of like, oh, we're trying a lot of new things. What's funny is that like, my work week is exactly the same. <laughs> Just sometimes at night I spend a little bit more time like editing videos. That's about it. Ooh, I don't know if we even want it, honestly. I don't know if we want to lose uh, permanent Polaroid invincibility. I know we don't have the Polaroid yet, but, but we will. Why not build it in, right? We already have the ability to fly uh, twice, I think, so <laughs> I don't think we need another one. Keep building that. I, I, Bob is building an army, dude. Remember that? We're building an army of bones is the, the impetus for this conversation. If you're not familiar, Bob was building an army, or Bob is building an army. It's a uh, YouTube comment copy pasta from, I believe, like 2013, maybe? And the reason Bob was building an army, it was a little stick man you put in the comments. I feel like I'm, I'm telling an, a story of an ancient civilization right now, just for the record. You put a little stick man in the comments, and it had like an ASCII tank. Why was Bob so angry that he was mobilizing? Oh, because you, uh, you were required to link your YouTube account to Google Plus in order to comment. It, I know that now it really feels like we're talking about an ancient civilization, because probably the last time anybody thought about Google Plus was like 2015. I've, I've seen my fair share of, of YouTube controversies. I mean, not me personally. Relatively clean in that regard. There was that pot play. That's, that's obviously, or not obviously, I should say. Honestly, probably the thing I still catch the most heat over. And it's mostly a joke. <laughs> I hope it's mostly a joke. Otherwise, y'all gotta get a life, dude. And I gotta get better, which I'm sure is where you thought I was gonna go with that, but no, you gotta, like, you gotta get some other stuff going on if you're actually upset about the pot play. Whatever happened to Bob's army? I don't know. It's very strange for me to think that most of the people who left those comments are probably, like, in their early to mid-twenties now and are working at, you know, real adult jobs. <laughs> Like, I've, I've been doing YouTube for a long time, and we've been playing the same game for a big chunk of it, too. I'm not sure if you've noticed. But it's funny to me, because I'm like... I mean, I'm starting to hit, like, the level. Like, we're at... Full-time, we're looking at, like, the end of 2021 will be 10 years. Which is... Kind of around the... Oh, I don't know. Oh, that came from Wishbone, I suppose. That's like, a, 10 years is around the level. Where I think I have to just be like, holy crap. That's that's double digit amounts of years. Like this is no longer I still sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure how long this is gonna last. But like I think uh if we had ten years, I gotta look at that and be like, we lasted. <laughs> We've had like a longer career in, in YouTube than the average professional athlete has had in the NHL. I can live with that. Not that we're going anywhere, hopefully, but uh, still, still discovering new stuff every single day. My body might be giving out, but my brain's getting better. It does boggle my mind sometimes, though, where I'm like, you know, I'm 31. I've been doing this for nine years. I've only been an adult, legally, for 13 years. <laughs> And then three of those years were my second, third, and fourth year of college, and then one year was teaching in South Korea. Like, that's, you can audit my whole adult life for occupational and scholastic activities in like 10 seconds. There's four things. Anyway, I was thinking about, the, not the YouTube stuff, but I was thinking about, you know, how young 31 still is actually. Not in like a hopeful sense, just in a cosmic sense. Because I saw this, uh, I hate the. All these old, like, a Hotmail copy pasta nonsense chain letters are coming to Twitter now. But Twitter is gradually becoming more boomer, so it's becoming a uh, victim to chain mail, which is hilarious to me. But this one was like, 
there were nine pills in a picture. And it said you can only take one pill. What do you choose? And then, like, some of the... So, they're pills that are, like... They give you a benefit, you know? One of them was, like, have a lot of money. Another one was be happy all the time. And I was like, you know what? Those are, those are pretty good... Those are pills that would be high in the power rankings, right? One of the other pills... Hold on, what do we got here? And this is how I know it was made by... Uh, probably a teenager. Don't be mad. But one of the pills was forget about your ex. <laughs> and then another one was grow five centimeters taller. And uh, another one was look 15 years younger. And I almost wanted to make like a snarky tweet. And no, it's not even like a negative tweet. It's just comical. But it's like, hmm, that's a really tough choice. Would I like to have a million dollars like cash right now or uh, look like I'm 16 years old <laughs> I'll, I'll just take the million please I I was laughing though that forget about your ex is on there I'm not saying it's not something that people who are older deal with because you know I have been on uh, TikTok, and you know whenever I see like a 50 year old man or, or woman's TikTok, I know that things are about to get spicy. Because this platform, it was it's not built for me. You should stick far, far away. But it was like, it's, it's always some weepy, like, relationship drama. And I'm like, dude, you're on TikTok with your, with your relationship problems and you were born in the 1960s? Anyway. Old people on TikTok, very good. Zoomers on TikTok, it's their natural habitat. Boomers on TikTok, a little... You know, it's not a platform for you if you're middle-aged, I think. You gotta, you gotta work harder at it. Let me not say it's not for you, but regardless, I was loving it. It was like, hmm, what would I like? To be happy all the time or to forget about my ex? If I answer in 30 seconds, can I can I choose a second one from the pool of things that are actually worth something? <laughs> By the way, if you're watching this and you're like, Man, I have to think about that one. I don't see why NL's roasting people who are not over their ex. Here's the thing. You know, I've been through that. You, if anything, you should take this as a positive thing. That, you know, many years on, I'm not beating myself up over it. And instead, I'm like, that's the easiest decision of all time. Grow five centimeters taller also made me laugh. Because it's like... I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I know a lot of people are, are preoccupied with their height. And I, I, you know, I think it would be ignorant to say that, you know, being taller in some ways is not advantageous. But I, I, I'm always stunned by how many people think it's like the be-all, end-all. And I'm like, the, the, the verbiage on one of the pills was have a lot of money which I think is user defined the verbiage on be taller be five centimeters taller <laughs> so I'm 510 on my toes um, that would allow me to get to six foot I guess that's you know a pretty big jump in some people's eyes. I feel like 99.9% .9 of the population would not even notice. But you don't know what's happening inside of their subconscious. Oh, I don't care either. You know why? Because I swallowed the pill that allows me to uh, have an exorbitant amount of money. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're walking around like a dummy. Still eating bologna sandwiches and just being slightly taller. I feel like if it was like, choose your own height, you might be able to sell more people. Five centimeters taller? That's crazy. There was one that was like... So one of them, I think, is something that a lot of people would go for. It was like, eat whatever you want and never uh, get fat. Sure. I understand that a lot of people would want that, but that's already, like, don't take this the wrong way. It's a solvable problem in some ways, you know? Diet, exercise, you know, forming new habits, etc., etc. Sure, I mean, if you have a medical reason for it, I understand. Genuine. 
wouldn't you just rather have like 10 million dollars? Another one was like read people's minds for three days. And I was like, that's an... See, because creatively speaking, I'm like, there, you could solve a lot of problems if you could read people's minds in three days. Like, I'm trying to, trying to think. But if you like put yourself in a position to read the minds of important people who are making important decisions, maybe you could buy in on some stocks. You could, you could basically insider trade. You know, you buy Tesla stock tomorrow, it goes up uh, 75 points. All of a sudden, guess what? You got $10 million. The only difference between you and me is you put in three extra days of work spying on people. I just took the pill and eliminated the middleman. It's just a poorly designed conundrum, is what I'm, is what I'm trying to say. One, well, like, two of the options are just very, very good. What's the other one? Well, I mean, like, I think a pill to... And this, you know, you could take this out of context pretty easily. I think a pill that makes you, like, content at all times would be, uh... Would be pretty nice as well. But at the same time, I don't know. Look, here's the thing. I'm not, like, a psychiatrist, right? Or, Peter, you always play psychologist. I think sometimes the, uh... The, the more negative emotions are actually some of the most satisfying, you know? Happiness and contentedness is always good. Anxiety is almost always bad. But a lot of the ones that are like in the middle, you know, even sadness. Guilt, you know, stuff like that. Those those are important to build a personality. I guess if you if you pushed me, you know, being happy all the time would almost be on a greater taxonomical scale, like more miserable. I know that sounds nonsensical, but... I know, you weren't expecting me to build out this awful chain letter <laughs> designed exclusively to go viral while providing nothing of merit to the society around it with any level of uh, genuine emotion, but here we are. All I'm saying is two things. Sometimes the bad emotions can be good for a bit. And then the second one is why wouldn't you just take the one that gives you a lot of money? I just want to find the people that are saying, I wouldn't take the money, I would just forget about my ex. That one to me is just... Maybe I don't want to know who those people are. Because then I would be like, hey, I'm twice your age and I made fun of you online. And they'd be like, that makes you a bully. And I'd be like, yeah, but a bully with 10 million dollars. <laughs> anyway. And also, like, look 15 years younger. I'm, I'm too young for that to be relevant. Like, maybe when I'm 40, I, w I would look at that question and be like, I wouldn't mind looking 25. I definitely don't want to look 16. If you're watching this and you're 16, again, please take that as a positive. In all likelihood, things are just going to get better for you. When I was 16, I was, you know, I had the Lance Bass haircut. I was uh, the same height I am now. But 70 pounds lighter and not in a not in a good way. A little gangly. Didn't really I hadn't perfected like any kind of smile yet, you know, it was just it was still getting comfortable in my skin. But even then I'm like, dude, I don't really care about like looking younger. Feeling younger. I'm not at the level like, you know, I, I still feel great. Some I think, you know, I'm I'm at the age where if you feel bad constantly, you gotta go get that checked out, obviously. So you might injure yourself more easily. That That's happened, for sure. But, you know, the whole body's not falling apart just quite yet. Um, but I'm sure, you know, if you're like 60 and you're like, oh, I could feel like I'm 45 again. Maybe that would be relevant or maybe not. Maybe I'm talking out of my, uh, you know what? My 25-year-old, you know what. I didn't think I could spin enough content out of that absolutely terrible viral post. And yet, here we are. <laughs> I, sh I should know myself better. All I'm asking, and this is why it bothers me. I'm like a would-you-rather connoisseur. 
So when people construct a, a, a laundered would you rather question but make the answer too easy, it, it's just insulting. It's like the same as when people try to like get out of it by being like, well, I would use the million dollars to make myself look 15 years younger. You know, that's, the, that's against the spirit of the question, Karen. Anyway, where was I going with this? Well, it's like, you ever see those? It, it, I want to tell you in advance, by the way. These exist exclusively for uh, getting hate clicks and shares. So am I falling victim to their plan? No, because I'm not sharing the link. I if anything, it's actually substantially better this way, because I'm getting to mine the content for humor without crediting the original source, and the original source was uh, very cynically, in my opinion, just trying to... Uh, make people angry in order to increase their social media engagement. So, you know, haha, -ha, I beat you. Anyway, they posted this this Twitter account and it's it's for like a real magazine. It posted this picture of this beautiful like island paradise. And it said, "Would you live here for 1 million dollars a year?" Which is just the dumbest question of all time. It's a place that's substantially desirable due to location, weather, and isolation. And they framed it as if it was like, how much would people have to pay you to live here? It's, it like, those drive me insane. There's a great, people always respond to them with this great picture of like, would you poop for a trillion dollars? But it, it just is hilarious to me every time. It's the same as the, and you've, if you've watched for any length of time, you've heard me go off on this before. Anytime there is a, uh, a viral tweet about order of operations, I just want to die. What are those tweets? Those are tweets where Lisa Simpson is pointing at a chalkboard, and the chalkboard has an ambiguously written mathematical expression on it with um, brackets multiplication, subtraction, and division. And then it goes, what's the answer? And then all of Twitter bends over backwards to prove to each other uh, that they learned order of operations in fourth grade and somehow as an adult 35 years later, that's a point of pride. It drives me insane, dude. You know why it drives me insane? You're like, because they phrase the function or the equation ambiguously, and as a result, it leads to both possible interpretations being correct. And if you were actually writing it in order to be understood, instead of to prove as a gotcha moment, you would have just written it without the division sign, but instead putting part of the function over the part that you wanted it to be divided by. Yes, that's the answer to your question. Hey, for now, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will. See you next time. See ya!